What is up, my brothers from another mother? I'm about to get a little bit geeky on you because have you ever wondered the difference between subcutaneous injections with TRT versus intramuscular? Because I have, and I've done a little bit of research on it over the last year to try to get some clarity on whether or not sub-Q versus IM was better. I did a video about two months ago. I'll put a card up in the top right of the screen where I was talking about how you can check your testosterone levels by yourself at home very easily, in fact. Um, and I wanted to do it in a fashion where I could compare uh, my levels between sub-Q and IM. Now, I'm on doctor-prescribed testosterone replacement therapy. I get proper labs done every quarter, roughly. This is a, a four-page blood test. Um, this test is a lot more comprehensive than what you can do at home, but I wanted to share the results because I found no results anywhere on the internet or YouTube comparing back-to-back -back subcutaneous versus intramuscular to see what your levels would look like. So let's hop straight into it. Um, here's the test results from my first level markers. By the way, um, this is where you get the test from. And I'll put a card up kind of like up over here for you. But you go to trylgc.com forward slash entrepreneurs. And when you check out with coupon code COOPER20, they'll give you 20% off. So my tests are from this one over here. Um, and let me just break down exactly how I did it. So you have some frame around the consistency because, uh, again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. This is just me kind of doing my own geek bro science at home. But I think I've uh, met, the con met the conditions uh, to at least for me anyway, so that I know that which one's better than the other for my own body. Uh, now, it's a commonly held belief that you need less uh, testosterone using sub-Q injections. So that's into the belly fat. So if I can kind of frame it for you like this. So if I take uh, three pencils like this and I hold it up to the screen. So let's say the blue layer is your skin, the Sharpie is the body fat, and then the red pen beneath that is uh, muscle. Because that's usually the, well, it's not usually, it's always a sequence when you're pinning into your body. You have to go through the skin first, then some fat, and then the muscle. So for the newer guys out there, um, Subcutaneous means you usually grab, like you pinch your belly fat and you kind of raise it up and you put a shallow um, insulin needle into your belly fat and then you put the uh, testosterone in this area of your body. Intramuscular means you use a slightly longer needle. Uh, you can also use an insulin, but slightly longer and it goes into your uh, muscle tissue. Uh, typically when you do belly fat, um, well, you're going in your belly and if you're going intramuscular, most guys when they're doing TRT are, are either using shoulders, pecs or glutes, sometimes legs. Most guys don't like legs because there's a lot of nerves there that can uh, be quite painful if you hit the wrong one. So um, that's the difference between sub-Q and intramuscular. So again, I was led to believe that um, sub-Q is going to give you healthier levels uh, and they're more consistent. What I found was, well, I'll explain that in just a second, so sit tight. Now, I did control for diet, sleep, exercise, vitamins, food, uh, all that stuff. Um, I'm also using HCG and DHEA. Um, so if you're not familiar, HCG is human con uh, chorionic gonotropin. I always figure out how to pronounce that the wrong way somehow. Um, and my protocol is I'm taking my weekly dose. So my script's for 100 milligrams and I use the exact same uh, um, source as well. So um, it was testosterone ethanate in a concentration of 200 milligrams per milliliter. So exact same uh, source all the time. It's, you know, from a pharmacy. Um, and then what I did was I did my injections every other day. So testosterone inject injections were every other day. And the days that I wasn't injecting testosterone, I would do HCG um, into the belly fat. Now, um, the dose was identical in both ways. So whether I went sub-Q or intramuscular, I used the identical belly, um, dose. And I also used DHDA at 25 milligrams a day, every single day. So the only thing that I changed the only thing that I changed was where I was injecting into my body. It either went into fat or it went into muscle. I even, I even controlled for the time of day that I did the blood lab. So again, I'm, I'm doing T on one day, HCG the next day, and then back to T. So I, I drew, the, well, I didn't draw blood because you actually prick your finger. So I pricked my finger at 9 a.m. both times on the day of my testosterone pin. So I don't know how I could have done this even more consistent than the way that I did. Um, one of the things that can throw off your levels as well is 
um, usually the amount of sleep you, you have and if you have sex as well. So I even controlled for that. I, I made sure that sleep was consistent, of course, or as best as I could. And I didn't have sex within 12 hours of drawing the blood. So this is about as consistent as I could possibly get when it came to figuring out what my levels look like. So here's the results from uh, March 10th, which was the first draw. And this was during subcutaneous uh, usage, um, as, I, as I just explained. And what I'll do is I'll break down what these markers are over here with let's get checked. Again, this is a very, very simple process, guys. You prick your finger, you put it in a vial, you ship it in. Um, on that video up in the top right, I explained exactly how it works. So you can check that out after this uh, video if you want some more information on how to check your levels. But it's real straightforward. You just basically order the kit. They ship it over to you. You do it at home. Uh, you fill this tiny little vial and you ship it in. And usually about... Um, I think it was about three or four days later, I'd get my results. Um, I'd get a text message notifying me that I got an email and then I just go to my email and here I am showing it to you. You can obviously see that I'm logged in over here and there's, you know, other tests over here that you can take a look at if you want as well. So, uh, with subcutaneous, uh, tracking, I've got very healthy levels as you can see. Um, I'll break these down one after the other. So the testosterone that they're tracking here, this is not bioavailable. Um, this is total. Um, so my levels were in a good, healthy range. I've, I've always felt good doing sub Q sub Q for me is a little more convenient because you can go into the belly fat. Uh, the only downside to it is you sometimes end up with a little lump there. Um, so that's really the only downside, but it's by far the most convenient way to administer this to your body. And it seems like that my levels were aligned with the preconceived notion that you always have healthier levels. In fact, they even say that you can use a little bit less when you go sub Q. I didn't, I used the exact same dose, uh, whether I went sub Q or intramuscular testing this back to back. Uh, sex hormone binding globulin, and I've done some uh, notes over here for you. So it's a protein made in the liver that binds to testosterone and estrogen. Low SHBG usually means cardiovascular illness, diabetes, high blood pressure, and high SHBG is bad because it decreases the amount of bioavailable testosterone here in your blood. It can cause things like infertility, decreased sex drive, erectile dysfunction, stuff like that. So um, healthy range is showing over here with sub Q. Uh, the free androgen index is more of, um, it's like flying an airplane up to 30,000 feet and looking at the landscape. It just gives you a, a vague idea of your androgen levels and what they look at. Uh, prolactin, uh, high prolactin can decrease testosterone and cause erectile dysfunction. It's also a sign of pituitary tumors, apparently. Uh, if it's also too high, it can cause mendolactate, believe it or not. Uh, low levels are also associated with sexual dysfunction as well. So I'm in a healthy range here for all of these levels. Now, what I was most interested in was how administering sub-Q versus IM would differ with my testosterone levels and my estrogen levels. I'm typically a high converter. So on my blood labs that my doctor gives me um, show that I generally convert uh, T into E at a high level if I do biweekly pins, which is what I was originally doing. When I switched to, ev to every other day, the levels normalized. So, so I was feeling a lot better. Um, and the blood labs also reflected uh, far healthier levels as well. So uh, this is the baseline on March 10th, 2020, as you can see um, when I did that first video. Very healthy levels. Now, I'm going to grab my notes over here because when I switched now, so I did it this way for, I mean, I was doing it sub Q for probably at least 10 months leading up to this. Um, so minimum six weeks was what my, um, feeling would have been. Then I switched over to intramuscular. As soon as I, uh, drew these blood labs and shipped them in that I switched over to intramuscular. And I think it was for roughly, well, you can see March 10th to 29th. So it was well over six weeks anyway. So these are the results, uh, from six weeks, uh, later roughly. And you can see the testosterone levels are a little higher and so are the free antigen index, which would make sense because this is, this is kind of an overview of your antigen markers. Um, I've already explained what these are. They're the, they're the exact same. I'll tell you what the differences are. So testosterone went from 28.2 to 38.2, as you can see over here, which is a little bit on their high end in, in accordance to their scale. Um, I'm going to explain what that means in a second. Sex hormone binding globulin stayed exactly the same. So that tells me uh, that the that the bioavailable amount of testosterone should have been higher in my bloodstream at this time because this number has not changed. Uh, free androgen index went up, of course, because that's going to follow this. Prolactin went from 197 down to 166. And prolactin, again, um, too high is a sign of pituitary tumors and too low 
is associated with sexual dysfunction. So it didn't move that much. It's still within the healthy ranges. So this is the high range and this is the low range of healthy ranges. This is how they use it over here, okay? Uh, and then estradiol went from 119 to 124. Uh, estradiol, if you're not familiar, if, if the ranges are, are off for estradiol, what'll usually happen is you can either have cardiovascular issues, you can have water retention, sexual dysfunction, um, or some water bloating. And of course, you know, you can get a little more emotional sometimes too. But um, for me, my estradiol has always been converting high if I did weekly or bi -week or biweekly pins. Every other day works way better for me. So I'm quite pleased with the results. Uh, if I'm being honest, I can't really tell a huge difference between how I felt um, intramuscular and um, subcutaneous, to be honest with you. Um, these levels here, according to their chart, indicate healthier, more normal levels. So if I'm, I'm supposing if, if my goal is more healthier levels, I should probably stick to subcutaneous for my body the way that it uh, deals with um, the exogenous introduction of testosterone ethanate. Um, I don't know if this would change with cypionate um, or propionate or any of those other things. Uh, they may. But um, these were the results that I got. And um, the April 29th ones say that my testosterone levels were slightly higher. Uh, they went up 10 points um, from 28.2 to 38.2. Uh, but the conversion of estrogen was, was still within a healthy range. So that's a good thing. Now, as far as this being anything like dangerous, like, you know, it says over here it's high. Uh, and then your testosterone level was returned as high. Uh, this means your testosterone levels were higher than normal ranges for an adult male. Now, the thing that you have to remember is this is for an adult male that's my age. Um, when it comes to TRT, I'm not a big fan of being at, um, you know, levels for your age. I mean, the whole point of TRT really is to feel optimal. When you feel optimal, that's what you kind of want to roll with. So the numbers should be an indicator of what optimization feels like for you. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this broadcast. So there you have it. Pretty straightforward stuff. Very, very easy test to administer. Again, um, pin in the top comment is the link and it's try, let's get checked or sorry, try lgc.com forward slash entrepreneurs and check out with coupon code Cooper 20. The last thing that I'll say is um, a lot of guys will ask me, well, when should I be doing this or when should I consider checking uh, my blood to see what my levels look like? And this is what you're going to start doing when you get on TRT, when you get older. I'm 46 right now. I've been doing this. Uh, I first met my doctor that uh, manages this around 2017. And then he put me on exogenous um, injections by about 2018. We, we tried to tweak a few things um, and then decided to go to exogenous after that. So what I would say you do is for these, for these hormone panels, I would run them once a year. So it's not expensive if you, let me just check again the price. Uh, it's 229 for the advanced panel, which is the one that I just showed you here. There's some other basic ones. I think that it's probably most important to, at the bare minimum, make sure you're tracking testosterone and your estradiol because the conversion uh, there can be high for guys. There's a lot of external forces uh, for men that are really uh, creating higher than normal estrogen levels. Um, things like soaps, um, you know, they have endocrine disruptors. It's one of the reasons why I'm always mentioning tactical soap to you guys because it's handmade and it doesn't have any endocrine disruptors in it. It's, it's actually way better for you. And um, I've been using that for the last couple of years and I've noticed my estrogens a lot more or the conversion is a lot healthier for me anyway. Like I feel a lot better. So things like that, external sources, uh, diet, um, things like Wi-Fi, cellular, Bluetooth can also have a terrible effect on your endocrine system. Uh, the mitochondria in your cells and the way they operate. So there's a lot of things that can throw us off today as men. So I think it's really important for guys to track this on an annual basis at least. Um, they also have other tests. So if you want to to check out their, their other tests, if you've been raw dogging, you want to do a um, uh, test for STDs, you know, for example, they also have those as well. You can use the exact same um, code as well. Try lgc.com forward slash entrepreneurs and use coupon code COOPER20. But definitely check it once a year. I would start doing it from the age of about, um, I mean, if I could do it all over again, if I'm being honest, I'd love to have more data back to about the age of 25 because it's usually by about the age of about 25 to 30 for most guys that your uh, testosterone levels start to drop. It's about one to 2% every year from about the age 25 to 30 onwards. Um, so that's when I would start tracking it. 
if I could go back in a time machine. I only started this a few years ago. Um, so not that expensive. I would do it at least once a year from about the age of 25, you know, 30 if you want to be a little more frugal and wait later in life. But yeah, that's my take on it. So as far as my results go, um, it looks like sub Q would indicate what would demonstrate as healthier levels. Um, I probably felt a little bit better on intramuscular. Sub Q is easier to administer because it's, it's just grabbing, you know, the front over here, a little bit of belly fat, boom, and you're done. Uh, whereas intramuscular, I didn't want to deal with my delts, chest, or legs. So I always go into my glutes and it's a little bit awkward, you know, you're in a mirror doing this kind of thing. And so, you know, th that's the other way to do it. But you, there's lots of places that you can stick a pin in your body. It's not that hard. Um, there's my take on it. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Give it a thumbs up. This is the first time as far as I know um, where somebody's compared sub Q versus IM. So if you've seen it somewhere else, let me know in the comments and link the video or the study uh, because I was not able to find anything. I'd really like to see what else is out there. I did a lot of searching and there you have it. I've, I've been your guinea pig. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Peace out.